Well, in all my life I'd seen how politics was male-dominated and how slowly we were managing to increase the number of women in politics. Then all of a sudden, you know, the, it was not that the, the, the line was very high, but it was going very steeply upwards we, after the 1990s relating to women heads of state and government. So I thought, oh gosh, here something is happening, what's happening? Are we really starting to win as a women's movement, or is this just created by chance factors and we don't quite know what it is, and maybe it doesn't mean that we are gaining ground on the women's movement? So that's when I thought, of all, I'll study this. Well, I, I think when you look at uh, what we've tried to change in the course of the, of the of since Second World War, for example, when we started actively promoting a women's cause, I mean, we have made relatively great progress in health, we've made great, uh, relatively great progress in education, and why we have not made so great progress in politics, it's because it's about power, it's about status, it's about resources. I mean, so it's about something that somebody has, and they want really to keep, and that we want to be a part of. So I mean, the reason why it's 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 it's, it's you're changing uh, social patterns, you're but you're also challenging people who are privileged, uh, wanting part of their privileges, and so they resist. The really big wave of feminism was in in the end of the 1800, beginning of 1900, where we were asking for the right to vote. Women wouldn't have got right to vote if they didn't ask for the right to vote. And the same with with changing the laws, with 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 bringing ma making a society more woman friendly, with creating a political system where women have access. I mean, if women didn't ask for it, who else would ask for it? So I mean, it's the women's movement that has and and, and it has come in several waves. But it is, and it's not always been as strong, but without a woman's movement, I can't see that that would have changed. Well, I think it's extremely important that, that um, you have women, activist women, both within the established political systems and without, or outside, and, um, and that they in different, different ways collaborate. I mean, I think it's very important that women inside the system collaborate on what they agree upon, even if they disagree about many things. And I think it's the collaboration, for example, it, very many political parties have had special women's groups. I, I think that's very important. And, and then you have more independent groups, and so you have a whole kind of scale of, of, of different types of groups, and the fact of, of supporting each other mutually. I mean, uh, the, those in politics could, for example, promote uh, the financial support of the women's movement. The women's movement would then support the, the different points of view and, and, and the interests that the women politicians would be promoting. So, so I, I, I mean, there's a lot to be gained in different ways of, of supporting each other. Well, I'm talking about democratic systems. I mean, in authoritarian systems, the game is completely different. But in, in, in democratic systems, I mean, there must be some link between the citizens on one hand and those who have power on the other, and the link are the political parties. So the political parties organize, and then they present themselves for election, they get somebody elected, and then they then exercise the power. And so, and, and, and what, but what is very depressing is when you look on a worldwide scale, there are ten percent women in the executive boards of the political parties. Totally, I mean, excuse me, that's just unbearable. And there's very little research and studies. It's just as if a political party is some kind of private thing that, that some leader has. I don't know, but but I mean, if you want a democracy, then you have to be able to have uh, also a democracy inside the political parties, and so that people can become members, that they can then vote for people they want to be in the executive committee, and support certain policies or not support other policies. 
and I think there must be much more and more the highlight the lights must be much more on the political parties how they work internally and also how the democratic they are and how much they let women come in and women influence them mm -hmm. some places they have tried to make women parties and and I think that is very, that can be an important thing to do but it's very difficult and it's difficult, it can be good threatening the other parties, but it's very difficult for a specific women's party to, to get many mandates. So I think it's better to put pressure on the parties that are there and then try to get women properly uh, inside influencing the, the structure and the elections and the policies of the parties. One of the most uh, simple things is, is has to do with electoral systems. I mean, um, if you have proportional elections, for example, and you for the, um, let's say, local elections, you have proportional elections, and you uh, nominate every other man and woman, and then um, you uh, have, for example, a women's group that makes a campaign for supporting women, mm -hmm. and then you can get more women in, into the local council. In Norway, we've done that a number of times. And where, where I mean, the party first then has to um, to support women, and then the voters have to support women. But with a with a, a proportional system, you can do that. It's much more difficult with the majority system. I mean, the majority system, you're supposed to only elect one in every electoral one person in every electoral district, and then it becomes, you know, mainly a man, and he can have a majority, but he can, I mean, he can have a small or great majority, and you can get situations where, in the country, parties have great numbers of voters but don't manage to get any mandates. I mean, the, 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 I think really people should consider how democratic the, um, the electoral system is and how easy it is for, for different types of groups, women, minorities, and so on and so forth, to be represented in the decision-making bodies of the society. There, there are many ways you can, can promote women in, in, in politics. For example, I, I love the example of um, Jim Grant, who was leader of, of UNICEF, and he, he just decided that for two years uh, you have to have special reasons to hire a man. And that was a way of making a quota, which was extremely uh, visible, um, accountable, and, and flexible. And so he recruited a lot, a lot of women, because you looked for them. And, and when you looked for them, you found that they were very com competent women. In, in other cases, I mean, you could demand, for example, that be short, in short lists there should be at least be a, a minimum number of women and so on and so forth. I mean, but it all starts by realizing that there's, there's a group called women and there's a group called men, and that men are, have advantages because they are men, both regards to power and uh, status and resources, and that women are subordinate or are, are less privileged with regards to the same to the power, status, and resources. And therefore, something special has to be done to, crea to create greater equality between these two groups of people. And, and there are many kinds of measures you can do if you only use your imagination and, and, and flexibility to try to make something work differently than until now. case uh, when I was I graduated and um, uh, I was kind of starting at the university and then I went to the established uh, Association for Women's Rights and I asked now what can I do for women and they said it was a very charming group of old ladies and they said well now we, we will manage to change the laws but we have to go into politics because if you don't go into politics and use the the rights that we have obtained on paper, they won't, won't be anything more than paper. So I went into a student group and then started to be active in politics. The, at the time, you couldn't promote women's issues. That was kind of not not permitted. But you, I mean, you, I, so I talked about foreign policy and I talked about economic policy and whatever. But when the women's movement came in the 60s and 70s, all of a sudden, I mean, the demand from women uh, uh, relating to the status of women became so strong that I, that I changed. I mean, I, I started, uh, I just decided that now I'm not going to depend 
only on my male mentor in the political party. I'm going to depend on support from women and I'm going to work with women and I'm going to promote women's issues. And that's what I've done. And uh, the awareness have changed uh, a bit, but I mean the basic thing is is to, to, to look at yourself as a woman and see what women what lives they are lead, leading and understand that in general in very many societies women are uh, are subordinate because they are women and therefore they need to get get together and support each other and require rights their rights and fight for it and if you're not a group fighting for something you won't get it so you would find somebody you can fight with and then uh, both within the political system and outside of the political system and uh, talk as loud as you can.